Wow. This is the longest farewell in history, isn't it? Um, I'm glad I'm prepared this time, so bad luck, guys. How long have I got? Um, so, yeah, this started six years ago um, when I applied for the, for the role. And I, was, I remember being asked in the interview, why do you want this job? And being a very simple person, I had a simple answer. Um, I care. I care about female cricket, I care about the program, and I care about the athletes in it. At that stage, I was only part-time, and I spent the next 12 months having countless coffees with the then high-performance manager and having the same conversation over and over about how the program needed to grow and what resources I required. I got to a stage where I realised that I was just getting lip service and my frustration grew around no progress. So I marched into Keith Bradshaw's office. So I apologise, Keith. Um, and that's where our relationship started. And straight away, with a um, conversation there around this, this is what, if you guys are serious about female cricket, we need to make some changes. And of course, Keith, being a supporter of female cricket for quite some time now, straight away put stuff in place. So the unfortunate thing was that there were a new high performance manager came in called Tim Nielsen around the same time that I went full time. So his life got seriously bad straight away because <laughs> it was my mission to walk into his office every day and complain about something or demand something. And I wasn't going away until he gave me the answer I wanted. If there's anything that Tim and I share, it is a passion for South Australia to have the best cricket teams at whatever format we're playing. I could share many stories around the pushback, the appalling, derogatory comments that I've had around female cricket, the ridiculous conversations at times that I've had to endure, but I won't share that. I'm just gonna say thank you, Tim, thank you, Keith, and thank you to the SACA board for the current members and the previous members who have been involved since I've been coach for your support of the female program. To Grant Warland, Bronnie Cly, who's here, Kate, Craig Brooks, anyone else who I've had a big Barney with at some stage um, around different things. I'm not apologising. I think it's, it's all a healthy... Um, You've got to have those tough conversations if you want to run a good business. And so I won't apologise, but thank you for the, those years of um, enjoyment that we've had together. Grant, though, if he's here, there's one thing that's not achieved. The Scorpions need a change room. They need their own change room. They need their own history on the wall. And I'm going to haunt you until that happens. If you have to build another one, Keith, don't worry about the bloody hotel. Build another change room. <laughs> um, so I've been an administrator of female cricket and a coach for more than 30 years. And I'm sorry if I get a little bit protective around female cricket but I think I'm the only one in this room who's actually had the passion for the game for that long. So if, to the girls, I'm sorry if I get frustrated when there's been complacency around training or there's a sense of entitlement about what you should or shouldn't have. I know Tegan's just mentioned how long it's been with our um, relationship, 11 years, wow. I'm not sure where that went, but I, it was fantastic to see this sh shy country kid actually progress through sheer hard work and determination to be a fantastic player in her own right and to actually lead her state. And so many times we just go, who's the best player in the team and let's make them the captain. And Tegan was seriously the best leader of this group and she has become a great player in her own right, as I've mentioned. So well done, Tegan. It's been a pleasure working with you. And please don't hang up the wicket-keeping gloves too soon. You've still got plenty of years to go. So to the girls, um, it's been a lot of change in that time that I've been with you, and things will continue to change. Um, but I've, I've enjoyed the experience. We've had, a, we've had a great 
six years, I think. We've achieved a lot together. Um, I've had some dark times. I've had some great times. Um, but now I know it's the right time for me to step aside. So I wish you, as a playing group, all the best. I know there's success around the corner and I know there's going to be lots of it once it starts. Female sport is everywhere at the moment and it's the exposure just grows by the minute. And the WBBL has been massive for, for our sport to put it on the map. But I will remind you that it's only in, in infant stages and if we become complacent and satisfied with where we're at, then we'll be stagnant and minimal progress will be made. I went to a conference a few months ago and met the general manager of the Carlton AFLW team and she explained to me how they'd put 35 staff in place for this season for their female program. Maybe that's why they're in the final on Sunday. But it also demonstrated to me that AFL was very serious about their female arm. So cricket needs to be worried. To my staff, I've loved working with you, all of you, along the way. We've had some great times. We've had some banter around science and sport. When I first, as Tegan mentioned, when I first started coaching, we actually, I eventually got a conditioning coach and they were given 40 minutes twice a week to make the girls fit. Now I've got Anthony Gallimarino, who gets 40 minutes for a warm up four times a week. And between bowling loads and 2K time trials and stribs and herb yogurts that you must have, there's hardly any time for actual cricket skills. <laughs> but to all of you, your work ethic is unbelievable and the hours that you put in um, to the program is outstanding. And so, again, I wish you all the best um, in the future and I thank you for your support along the way. And to Luke, I wish you all the best. You're a fantastic person. You're a fantastic coach. So believe in yourself. You're going to do a great job. To Tim Nilsson, well, where do I start? We've had some blues, we've had some laughs, but I actually want to thank you personally for your support or for, for your personal support of, of me as a coach, particularly in the last couple of seasons, which I've, had a, I've struggled a little bit with. Um, but thank you and uh, for your unwavering support along the way. And last but not least, to my husband, Sean Pearce. I wouldn't be doing this job. I don't know why I'm doing this job. <laughs> if you hadn't have given me that support, everybody needs someone in their life that's the rock, and you're mine, and thank you.